Chittasya Padena Vacha Malam Shari Rasya Chavaidyakena Yopaka Rotam Ravaram Munina Patanjalim Ranjalim Anato Smenityam Harihi O Shri Gurbhyo Namaha Harihi O My pranams to all Apur Jyotis, Divine Light of the Self. I welcome all of you to today's session of Yoga Sutra. I am a student. I am not a Pandita. I am not a Jnani. I am not a Guru. I am studying myself. I am making some notes. And I am making those notes available for you. If you find it useful, please use it. This is for my learning purpose. I am conducting these sessions for my learning purpose. If there are any mistakes in my understanding, please forgive me. So far, we have Studied up to sutra number 1.26. Now, today we are going to study sutra number 1.27, chapter 1, sutra 27. So, Avataranika Bhoja Vritti. Evam Prabhavam Uttva Upasano Payogaya Vachaka Maha. What it says is, having talked about the Prabhava of Ishvara in the previous sutras, now for the purpose of Upasana, worship or meditation or for Upasana, we are going to say the Vachaka name or sound that represents Ishvara. This is for Upasana purpose. Sutra number 1.27 Chapter 1 Sutra number 27 Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha Repeat Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha Again, Tasya Vachaka Pranavaha. Again, Tasya Vachaka Pranavaha. What is the meaning? The sound that represents or symbolizes or points to Ishvara or God is Pranava. Pranava is Omkara. So, the sacred syllable. O is Pranava that represents Ishvara. Vyasa Bhashya Vacha Ishvara Pranavasya Kimasya Sanketa Kritam Vacha Vacha Katvamaya Pradipa Prakashavam Avastitamiti Stitatosya Vachasya Vachakena Saha Samandaha Sanketa Svishvarasya Stitame Vartham Abhinayati Yada Avastitaha 
पिता पुत्रयो संबंध संकेते संकेते नवद्योत्यते अयम से पिता अयम से पुत्र सर्गा वाच्यवाचक शक्त शक्तपेक्षद संकेत क्रियते संप्रतिपत्तिया नि शब्दसबंध बिटवीन ओम एंड ईश्वर दर इज वाच्य वाचक रिलेशनशिप is the relay question you can ask a question is the relation between the word or sound om and ishvara is it symbolic or representational temporary artificial or is the relation permanent or like a lamp and its luminosity is it like that answer is the relation between the sound om and what the sound represents ishvara is eternal and always existent ishvara and ishvara's representation om are related eternally and well established and they are only bringing into light what is already established in relation that om represents ishvara is a well established relation example is just like father and son relationship when you say he is the father and he is the son already the relationship is well established you are only bringing into light through language so relationship between a father and a son is already established by the time we say this is the father and this is the son we are only throwing light on what is already existing relationship universe goes through many cycles of creation sustenance and destruction each cycle is called a sarga the relation between ishvara and om is same in all sarkas in all the cycles of creation sustaining and destruction the relationship between ishvara and om is same it is eternal the knowers of veda panditas know this truth why because relation between the word and its meaning is eternal so the word which glorifies god is pranava this is the definition of pranava pranava is the word that glorifies god ishvara in kathopanishad 2.95 this mantra is there sarve veda yat padama mananti तपांसी सर्वाणि च यद्वदन्ति यदिच्छन्तो ब्रह्मचर्यं चरन्ति तत्ते पदं संग्रहेण ब्रवीमि ओम इत्येतत् व्हाट इट मीन्स इज व्हाट इज द गोल ऑफ ऑल वेदास व्हाट डज ऑल वेदास टॉक अबाउट एंड एंड व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ ऑल द पीपल हु आर परफॉर्मिंग तपस्या ऑस्टेरिटीज and why do people perform Brahm, uh, undergo brahmacharya ashram for observing celibacy and brahmacharya the purpose of all that that means whatever spiritual practices are there what is the purpose of all those spiritual practices that purpose i will tell you in brief it is called om this 
is the mantra in Katopanishad. In Mundaka Upanishad 2.2.4, it is told Pranavo Danuhu Sharo Pyatma Brahma Talaksham Uchate Apramatena Vedavyam Sharavat Tanmayo Bhave. Meaning Pranava Om Pranava Om is the bow. Atma is the arrow. Brahman is the aim. Brahman Parabrahman, Supreme Being is the aim. And with concentration and focus, one should merge with the target. That means one should, through Atma Jnana and Pranava, one should merge with the target. So, even in Munda Cooperation, the importance of Pranava is told. In Mandukya Upanishad also, Mandukya Upanishad is an elaboration on the Omkara. Om Ityetat Aksharam Idam Sarvam Tasyopa Vyakhyanam. So it is told in Mandukya Upanishad like this. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 8, shloka number 13, it is told Om Ityeka Aksharam Brahma Vyaharan Mamanusmaran Yah Prayat Tejan Deham Sayati Paramam Gatun. One who leaves the body at the time of death, remembering Krishna, God, Ishvara, while chanting the sacred syllable Omkara, will reach me, Krishna, God, and Ishvara. All are same. So, in Bhagavad Gita chapter 8, Shloka 13 places the importance on Om. And again, in Bhagavad Gita chapter 17, Shloka number 23, it is told Om Tatsatiti Nidesho Brahmanaha Trivida Smritaha Brahmana Stena Vedascha Yagnascha Vita Pura. Om Tatsat are the sacred syllables representing supreme absolute truth from the beginning of the creation. It is known from the beginning of the creation that Om Tatsat are the sacred syllables representing supreme absolute truth. From them came the priest, scriptures and sacrifice. Brahmana, Veda and Yajna. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 7, Shloka 8, also it is told, Pranavaha, Pranava, Sarva Vedeshu. I am the sacred syllable Om in all Vedas. So, Om, the importance of Om, we cannot tell briefly, is very, very important. Chanting Omkara, mind becomes silent. By chanting Omkara, thinking about God or making God as the focus, Ishwara as the focus, chant Omkara. It's a good meditation. So, with that, we come to end of today's session. Hari Om Tatsat Sri Krishna Arpanamasa.